I got one of these eight kilowatt parking heaters. These are these new Chinese heaters that are exploding all over the market and they basically have a little tiny chamber where it burns diesel fuel and it has a little fan to keep an airflow moving and exhaust intake and exhaust go through this side and then you have hot air uh, come out this side. This is where your fresh air intake is. So they're safe to use in vehicles and shops. Um, people are using these in camper vans or all sorts of things. I want to try to use this in my EV conversion since in electric con uh, conversion you don't have a good source of heat. But I absolutely hate the smell of diesel fuel. So I'm not going to show you how to set this up. The point of this video is I'm going to experiment with alternative fuels on this air heater. Number one reason I want to do this is just I absolutely hate the smell of diesel fuel. The raw fuel, the fumes, uh, you can get a little bit on your fingers or on your shoe at like the gas station and you'll smell it, it'll linger with you all day. It's hard to wash off. I don't want to get that on my electric car, right? Electric cars are supposed to be clean and green. So another reason is um, you can use kerosene. Kerosene is definitely greener and cleaner burning than diesel. Uh, it also has that smell, that distinctive odor, um, but ethanol doesn't. And unlike gasoline, ethanol is a lot less uh, stinky than gasoline. Um, and it, when you get it on your fingers, it dissipates a lot quicker and it's easier to wash off. So for all those reasons, that's why I'm going to choose ethanol for this heater. So uh, you can run these on kerosene and some people recommend you get kerosene that has a high lubricity um, factor to it. So because the fuel pump in here, it uh, has very small tolerances and the metal can have excessive wear without the lubricity of like a diesel fuel. So I want to run this on E85 uh, ethanol fuel. So I've got my ethanol here. Now ethanol is known for being very non uh, uh, lubricating. It doesn't lubricate very well at all and especially the high uh, ethanol content. So some people have run these on gasoline okay. Um, but I haven't seen anyone try to run this on ethanol yet. So what I got is some top lube, Power Plus top lube. And what this is, is a specifically formulated um, lubricant that you put into your ethanol fuel. And what it does is it lubricates in a normal engine, the fuel injectors, the fuel pump, um, all of the things like that, that the, the fuel would normally lubricate but when you have high amounts of alcohol it uh, doesn't so that's what this stuff's designed to do so I'm going to add a little bit of this to my ethanol fuel and I'm hoping that that's going to give me the lubricity needed to run this heater now I think that this is going to run just fine on ethanol it might actually run better um, some people say that these are a diesel engine like actually an engine and they're not at all it's really just like a chamber like a, a burning a combustion chamber and there's no piston there's no reciprocating uh, feature at all what happens is you apply power to a motor in here the controller does it and it spins a little tiny motor and that draws in fresh air and starts the pump and, and draws in the fuel and starts ignition um, it does not the combustion does not run the thing and there's no reciprocating piston like you would normally get in an internal combustion engine so because of that, um, the differences between diesel, gasoline, ethanol, kerosene, these other fuels, I don't think is going to make such a big difference because this is basically just a chamber where we're going to be burning uh, fuel to make heat. That's the idea. Um, after I get it running on ethanol, maybe we'll try it on ethanol versus diesel and see if it can maintain like my garage here at a certain temperature for a certain amount of time. Um, and see which one lasts longer if they last the same um, we can do some other tests like that so what I'm going to go ahead and do is add a little bit of this top lube to my fuel and then I'm going to assemble the air heater now you've probably seen more videos of people putting these together so I won't bore you with that and we'll just skip to running it Alright, 
so I got the heater working over here. Sorry, we're in the corner of my garage. It was uh, really windy outside, and um, this is kind of how I want to run it because I can get the exhaust out under the door. I have the fuel outside too in a, the tank. So I had a little bit of trouble getting it primed, but I mean, that's pretty much to be expected. Um, otherwise, it seems like it's working just fine on ethanol. So another benefit of running ethanol over diesel is that um, people experience coking issues with this or uh, carbon buildup inside the, the combustion chamber and the air vents and all that stuff gets built up with carbon because the diesel is not being burnt fully when it's at a lower power setting. Um, so like for instance, if you have a eight or 10 kilowatt unit when you really only need a two or a five, and so it's only running at 25% power. It's probably building up carbon or coke inside, which it, it's fine, it'll run. Um, it's just maybe a year or two years, you're gonna have to clean that out or it's gonna stop working. But with ethanol, you shouldn't have that problem even if you run it at a very low power setting because ethanol has so much less of the carbohydrates, um, <laughs> did I say carbohydrates? The uh, dirty hydrocarbons that gasoline and diesel have. All of those organic fuel compounds like benzene and, and all the other gross stuff that's in there, E85 has far less than diesel. And since it's 85, E85, it's eight, about 85% less than gasoline. So, so much cleaner in that respect, which means that if you run it at a low power setting, you should not have the coking issue that you have with the diesel. Okay, so we've been running the heater now for uh, about an hour and a half and I came in a, like about an hour ago and it was off and on the screen was error eight and that means um, that there was like a fuel blockage or a fuel flow problem. So basically I expected something like that because ethanol has got lower energy density than diesel or gasoline. You need higher volume of fuel. So what I did is I went into the control panel. You can enter the admin code, um, 1688, got in there, and I changed the minimum fuel flow from, I think it was 1.4 hertz. I changed it up to two hertz. And it has been running now um, nonstop for the last uh, hour. So I think that we solved it. Um, but that was just a simple thing is just increase the minimum fuel flow slightly. I also increased the maximum fuel flow. Um, it was like 5.4 or 5.2. I increased that to six because that was a uh, setting people recommended online. So I bumped both the, the minimum and the maximum up slightly, not too much. And it's been running great now. So, uh, I'll keep letting it go. We're nice and warm in here, about 55 degrees. It's really windy. Um, and the temperature's dropping fast outside. The sun just went down and it's supposed to snow uh, tonight and tomorrow morning. So temperature's dropping fast. The heater's still working great. Um, the exhaust still has uh, very little odor. Um, I can notice when I go outside or when the air blows it back, this smells a little bit like uh, a barbecue grill when you're uh, burning off some lighter fluid, but it's not as strong. It's like very faint. So Overall, very happy with the uh, odor. It's not overwhelming. I, I, I was thinking about getting a catalytic converter, like the smallest catalytic converter you've ever seen and installing it on there. So we might do that down the road. But anyway, I think that does it for now. Unless I have anything else to add tonight, uh, this is where I'll leave it. So thanks for watching. We got the Chinese diesel air heater working on E85 ethanol, clean and green and smell free. So really happy about that. I don't have to deal with 
diesel and carry diesel around and smell diesel all the time. So, anyway, thanks for watching. Catch you next time. Oh, and if you haven't checked out, check out my electric channel, Unique Mobility, where we're converting cars from gasoline to electric, like this 1996 Land Cruiser right here, and I'm restoring a couple old 1980s electric cars. So, check that out. Thanks for watching.